Last August, Molly Martins and her father Tom were convicted unanimously by a US jury of the second degree murder of Molly's Irish husband, Jason Corbett. Two years after his death, Jason's family finally got justice for them and his children. And now they want to tell the truth about their brother and restore his good name after a long and very difficult fight for justice. So would you welcome tonight, please, Tracy Corbett Lynch, Wayne Corbett and Marilyn Corbett. You're so welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Tracy, I think it's important before we talk about the, the awful events and the tragedy to, to bring Jason alive for the purpose of our conversation, to, to, to let us relate to who he was as a brother, as a father, as a son, as a friend. Tell us a little bit about Jason. Well, Jason was one of the most amazing people. Um, he was kind, he was generous. Um, his children, Jack and Sarah, were his whole world. Um, and he just took care of people. He was interested in people. Um, and he was just so loving. He gave the best hugs ever. <laughs> he was good at that, wasn't he? Uh, he was really good okay. at that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he was just everything to us, and we loved him. With, we, we have to go straight into the story, uh, and we can't go any further without mentioning Molly Martins and the fact that she came into Jason's life and everything changed. Do, can you tell us when she came into his life and how, what happened and how she came into his life? Uh, Jason's first wife, Mags, passed away suddenly from an asthma attack in November of 2006. Yes. And we all gathered around and Jason was just devastated and we supported him as a family. But there came a time where he, you know, he wanted to have a structure and a stability for Jack and Sarah and he had to go back to work, he had responsibilities. So he decided to um, engage the services of an au pair. And Molly Martins was his third au pair. Um, and she arrived in March of 2008. Uh, she arrived on the scene from the States, obviously, and they developed a relationship that went beyond au pair and uh, employer, I suppose. Um, how did you feel about that? Um, I mean, when Molly arrived into Jason's life, it was, at one of, it was the lowest ebb in his life um, and he was very vulnerable and when they started to have a relationship, he smiled again. I was happy to see him smiling again. You know, he'd been through just such devastation um, and everybody around him wanted him, you know, to have some happiness and hopefulness in his life. And she brought that to him? She brought that to him. Yeah, she did. I, I was concerned um, because um, obviously of Jack and Sarah and that Molly was living in the house in the employer-employee relationship and Jason and I spoke about that and in June of that year actually um, Jason decided that he needed that break um, with Molly and she went back to America um, until August and the plan was for her to come back and uh, get another job and um, live separately so that Jason and her could have a relationship, but not with her living in the house. Yeah. Um, but it, it never transpired. There was always a different excuse from Molly. So from then on, she was a fixture um, in the house and in their lives. And they got married, Marilyn, um, yes. as you know. And uh, was it, did, did you see a different side to Molly? either at the wedding or around that time? Yeah, around that time um, when we went over for the wedding, uh, I suppose we heard different stories. Um, the way she was was completely someone that we, we just didn't know. In what sense? From the person who was in, in Ireland. Yeah. Um, I suppose one conversation I was having at the wedding, uh, a couple had remarked um, how Sarah looks very like her mum. And I said, oh, did you see Megs taking this out of photograph of her? And I said, no, her mom, Molly. Uh, but I said, Molly is not her, her mom. I said, Meg's is. And they look confused and I look confused. Then people started coming in the conversation and I kind of drifted away. Um, there was other incidents um, when we were kind of meeting the bridesmaids, um, just trying to get to know them and yeah. everyone be relaxed at the wedding. Yeah. Um, and it transpired, she had told them that how she met Jason was that she was friends with Meg's and Jason. And when Mags passed away, that Jason reached out to her um, to help him with the children. Now, obviously, she never met Jason or Mags before Mags passed away. 
So very peculiar stories. And yeah, even yeah. further on, um, yeah. she had told us that she had a sister called Grace who died of leukemia. Now, as it transpired, she never had a sister called Grace. All oh, right, okay, so... We didn't know all this until after, after Jason. the Jason and a lot of things like that after Jason passed away. After, after the event, yeah. okay. And, and they moved to the United States then, didn't they? And I think that's when you started seeing cracks appear. I suppose an important part of the story is the fact that Molly seemed to want to adopt the children. Yes. And Jason seemed to be in two minds about yes. that. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Wayne? And, and yes. Um, I don't think Jason, Jason was never going to allow Molly to adopt the children. Why not, though, if they were married and in love and...? Because I, I just thought that there was always something in the back of his mind that he just didn't want Molly to adopt the children. He, he, I knew that for a fact. She had told him a couple of weeks ago, prior to getting married, that she had bipolar. Um, and that's the first Jason ever heard that she had a, a, an, an illness. I think a lot has um, happened around the wedding. Yeah. And yeah. besides that, you know, obviously what we had heard and what she had said about Mags and... Jason had been com become aware of that after the wedding. Yes. So it broke the trust down between Jay. I recall talking to Jason, and it broke that trust down. They would just gotten married. Yes. He'd given up his job. He'd moved everything over there, bought a house, lock, stock, and barn. And then he found out that, you know, his wife had lied about the mother of his two children, Mags Fitzpatrick. Yes. So the the trust was broken, and at that point, he said he wasn't going to allow an adoption to he go He was a ahead. bit concerned about the fact concern. that she was whatever, the bipolar is a separate issue, of course, because what, yeah. you're, what you're describing initially is, is, sounds like a fantasist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Somebody concocting these stories uh, and making them feel real and so yeah. on. You have to imagine, Ryan, he was just becoming aware of all of these things, you know, in a very short space of time, had yes. left his home and his family and friends Massive and all upheaval. the network. Yeah. Yeah. Mass and committed to this Wayne, you're Jason's twin, is that right? Yes, that's right, yeah. uh, So you probably have a bond, uh, yes. or had a bond, that, yeah. that yeah. is a little different, with, that yeah. comes with being a twin, I suspect. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, but sadly, and in some ways, maybe it, it was meant to be that you got that terrible phone call, isn't that right? It, yes. It, it, was, the, it was the evening of, uh, early evening, August the 2nd, 2015. Yeah. Uh, who called you to say what? Uh, Sharon Martins called me at about 10 past 6 in she the evening. She being? Uh, Molly Martins' mother. And she just said that, Molly and Jason had an argument. Molly pushed Jason, Jason hit his head, and Jason is dead. And she said, I asked, could I speak to Molly Martin? She said, no. She said, she's too upset. And she put on the phone. End the phone call. That, end, the, end the call. And you then went to? I, I, was, I was about two minutes away from the family home in sure. Limerick. So I went down to my parents' house yes. in Jamesboro, Limerick. And I. It sounds probably blunt at the time, but I just went in and told my mother that Jason was killed in the States. She was sitting in the living room at the time. A shocking thing to have to take yes, in and to, have to tell your mother, tell if your mother to have to yes. take in. Tracy, could you kind of give us a, a, a sense of what, what they say happened that night? They said a lot of things. Sure. Um, the first time I spoke to um, any member of the family. I was calling Molly repeatedly when I had found out I was in St. Jean de Mont in France and um, Sharon Martins, Molly's mother, answered the phone and she said that Jason had been drinking for 24 hours and that he came home and they had had an argument and Molly pushed him and he fell and banged his head. Um, a couple of hours later I was driving to Charles de Gaulle to get home to my parents and I spoke to Molly and she said they had an argument and he fell and hit his head. We got lots of different versions of Jason falling and hitting his head. Uh, she actually said that she hit him at uh, one stage as well um, to me and she wouldn't tell me with what in the conversation. And of course, Tom Martins, um, her, had father. His, her father, had his version as well um, of, you know, um, a different story completely. Well, he phoned 911 he and he called the emergency services to tell them what he said happened that night. And we, that, 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 that tape of that call uh, is, is, is common knowledge, as you know. Yes. And we've asked you your permission before the show to play that tonight to illustrate 
the immediacy of what we're dealing with, and then we're going to try and counter, or at least respond to what this message says with what you now know probably happened. Yes. So you're okay if we play this message now, that this is Molly Martin's father calling from the scene of the crime. Yes. Okay. I'm listening. My daughter's husband, um, my son-in-law, um, got in a fight with my daughter. I intervened, and I, I think um, he's in bad shape. We need help. Okay, what do you mean he's in bad shape? He's hurt? He's, he's bleeding all over, and I, I may have killed him. Hit him in the head. With what? With a baseball bat. With a baseball bat? Yes, ma'am. He, he was choking my daughter. He said, I'm going to kill her. Uh, that's not easy to listen to, I suspect. No. Um, because you know that that's not what happened. No. What happened? Yes, what happened as you I'm now sure. know the facts? Well, what Tom Martin's claimed was that he came up to the room and there was an argument, um, but there were no bruises on either of them, no mark. The blood that were on, was on them was Jason's blood. Um, no torn clothes, nothing at all. Um, and what I believe happened is a different story. Would you like to share it with us? Um, well, I believe that Molly Martin's planned to kill Jason um, and that all the evidence pointed towards it. I was disappointed there wasn't a first degree charge. Um, I believe that I know that Jason had a bag packed um, with the kids' clothes. Uh, he was going to leave. He'd been looking up flights. Um, that he had been drugged, and the toxicology report shows the drugs in his system. And those drugs come from, you suspect, came they from? Were, they were prescribed to Molly Martins right. on the Friday before Jason was murdered. You think he might have, she might have spiked his food yes, or drink? Yes, absolutely, and, and that's that, what I believe. And that he was asleep? Yeah, that then... he was asleep, and that he was hit in, the, hit in bed while he was asleep, and that Molly Martins um, hit him you know, to within an inch of his life uh, with the brick. And I believe she went and got her father as he lay dying. And her father came up and did hit Jason with the baseball bat. And there were post-mortem hits on Jason's body um, afterwards. And I believe they left him to die. I believe that, you know, they waited to call 911 um, when the EMT arrived. Um, you know, and they gave evidence that Jason's body was cold. Um, I believe they left Jason to die before they called 911. I think Jason was probably dead a long time before they actually called 911. Your, your immediate thoughts got to be the children, Marilyn. Um, yes. And what, did you get straight over to the States? Yes, uh, myself, could. Tracy and Jason's best friend, Paul, yes. um, got on a flight uh, straight over. Um, and Tracy was on the phone constantly about the children. But when we arrived, um, we were stonewalled. Not a single word from any of the Martins. No answering phones. So no, nothing. nothing. So we didn't know where Jason was. They wouldn't tell us. Um, so through a lot of phone calls, um, we found out where Jason was. Um, subsequently, she knew then, so she moved Jason. So we couldn't find him. From a, a morgue, was For a, it? Yes, from a funeral home. We pleaded with them yeah. not to cremate Jason's body with the first crematorium that he was in. And she had found out that I had found out where he, he was due to go to and moved. But it was a very kind nurse in yeah. the hospital that actually told us where Jason's body was going to. They didn't tell us. They had the last conversation we had with them. They told us to contact their attorneys. So we ended up um, where there was two sets of attorneys actually um, negotiating um, with Molly Martins for her to sign the release paper so we could send Jason home to his parents. And she eventually agreed once we paid all expenses up to that day and for anything after that. It was contingent on yes. you paying up before yes. she would... So I would have given her anything. Yeah. Was there a smear campaign? against Jason, do you think an active one, Wayne? And could yes. you tell me about that and who was orchestrating it? Yes, I think it was orchestrated by, by Molly Martins and uh, Tom Martins. Um, they said things like Jason was a member of the IRA, which was 
not 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 true. Yeah. Uh, they said he was an M MMA fighter. I don't know if you know Jason and seen Jason. He That's definitely he, just, he, de yeah. he definitely did. But, but outrageous yes. games. Yeah. Uh, he, also, he said he used to play soccer and yeah. he used to take centre, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Because there was a ring around him. He didn't have to run very far. Yeah. And then he was in the yes, he was yeah. for God's sake game. So different story. They also said like that um, he, he had a part in uh, Mags's death even though Mags died tragically of an asthma attack in 2006. Yes, okay. So it's all fabrication. And it was relentless. Them. And it was relentless. So you're fighting yes. all of this the whole time. The trial, such coverage uh, all over the world, people were watching this trial, but this was your brother. Yes. And, you know, the son of your parents who are here tonight. And what, what was it like for you to sit through that? To, to, you must have been quite close uh, in proximity to, say, Tom Martins and Molly Martins. Uh, you, did you did you look at Tom Martins in the eye when he was giving evidence or I did um, they would look at us um, you know and make eye contact and the first day when we went into the courthouse I was sitting on the outside and they would look back and make eye contact with us and uh, Tom Martins was very arrogant um, and one the day that Tom Martins gave evidence because I remember it clearly I actually wore a red jacket and top because I wanted him to see him to see me, sorry. You wanted to stand out. I wanted to stand yeah. out. Um, and I sat directly in his line of vision. I wanted to look him in the eye as he lied on um, the stand. Because just, it was a horrendous process. Did he react to you when you were staring him down? Uh, he would stare right back <laughs> at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had no empathy or, you know, more, they... No remorse. Were, no remorse, nothing. They, they fought it all the way. Fought it all the way. And yeah. tried to uh, make a joke while he was up in the stand. Did he? When they were yeah. questioning about the stains in his boxer shorts, which obviously were Jason's blood. Yeah. And he actually tried to make a joke of it. Mm. So that's what you're yeah. dealing with, ultimately. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, the, the, the children, I'm, I'm trying to... Because I've met them earlier on, they, and they're so remarkable, I have to say. They're so polite and... Yeah fun and almost oblivious and yet they've had this horrible story in their lives. I can't believe how adjusted they are. But you needed to get them the hell out of there yes. fast. Yeah. Um, how did you manage to do that? Because you're dealing with people who are clearly going to be difficult to allow that to happen. How did you...? Well, there was a lot of effort to legally and legally to try and stop us from getting out of the country. Yeah. Um, you know, there were members of the Martins that went to Charlotte Airport um, who were federal agents and demanded to see the passenger manifest, for example, of all the flights to Ireland on a flight that we were due to go out. So it was di very difficult. The kids had been told that they couldn't be, they wouldn't get out of the country because the FBI wouldn't leave them. Um, and legally they were trying to stop me from getting out of the country as well. So that concern about being served to keep us in the country again. So it was literally around planes, trains and automobiles. It was something like out of a James Bond movie. Just to, to get them clear to and get out, out of the jurisdiction. Yeah, and we home. were, Certainly. I have to say we had, um, you know, we often think um, our councillors or TDs mightn't help us out. We had tremendous help here from um, a TD, Kieran O'Donnell was huge in the middle of the night. Um, you know, taking calls, um, Minister Charlie Flanagan and Councillor Jerry O'Dea. So Good. we were very lucky um, to have that support. When we were travelling, we had, um, we were in the ambassador's car, so we had diplomatic plates. Uh, we were checked in under pseudonyms into hotels. And when they got home, did, did, is, it, is it true that Molly tried to get a uh, hire a plane? to fly a message yes. over yes, the kids' that's school? True. Is that that's true? true. That's what true. did she want to write in the message? Or do we know that much? Or? She wanted to, she had first tried to take out a half page advert in a local newspaper. Um, she used to always say, wherever you are, my love will find you. Um, and you can take from that um, what the message was. And she looked to hire several planes to fly over their school. She tried to befriend um, children who were in Jack and Sarah's class um, through social media. She was sending letters right. to um, our house and our neighbour's house. So it was it was horrendous. It was pretty tough trying to protect them. Uh, young Jack is 13. Yes. And he had to give a victim impact statement at the age of 11. I'm going to read a couple of lines from it because I think it brings the children into the room here without having to put them through the ordeal of meeting them yeah. here. Yeah. 
and he said, my dad was always cheering me on in sport and school and just regular life, and I always hoped after that night that he could see me score a try in rugby or score a goal or just see me succeed in life, and he can't see that anymore. And this has affected my little sister a lot as well. She will never have a father, never have a father-daughter dance, and Sarah and my dad have been planning one for ages. And Molly Martins, he wrote and said, will not be forgotten as well. She will always be remembered as the woman who killed her husband for no reason. She will be remembered as a murderer. From an 11-year-old. Yes. Yeah. Jack had actually overheard me saying to David, have you, um, have you the victim impact statement um, the day before we were due to fly? Yes. And um, he asked what that was and we explained what it was. And he asked why he couldn't do one, yeah. um, that it was his dad. So I said, you can, you can do one if you want. Um, and he did. And the next day before we left, he gave me a folded up piece of paper with his scribbles and marks and um, handwriting. And Out of the mouth of babes, this wisdom yeah. and hurt. Can I ask you, uh, Molly Martins and her father are currently where? In prison, obviously. In prison. In, yeah. in prison. In and North Carolina. What did they get sentenced to? Um, second degree murder. And that, that involves how long in prison behind bars? 20 to 25 years. Is, do you, are you happy, if that's the right word, with that uh, judgment? Or? Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not happy with that, yeah. Jason. You know, I can, we can never have yeah. Jason back. The kids are going to grow up without one of the most amazing people yeah. in the world. So, yeah. no, I feel that they've been made accountable to a certain extent. Yes. Um, I'm... Yeah, um, I think, you know, especially for Molly Martins, the age she is, uh, I have no doubt whatsoever that she will seek out a kind-hearted, generous, loving man at some stage, whether it's inside or outside of we, jail. We haven't and seen the will, last of her, is what you're I saying. Don't think 20 so. years, yeah. you know, is not that long in the great scheme of things. But in the meantime, you've written the book, the proceeds will go to the children, which yeah. is so appropriate. And I want to thank you for coming in tonight with the family and for remembering your brother and for setting the record straight for a lot of people this evening. And we can only wish you happiness going into the future. And mind those beautiful children. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the Corbett family. Thank you, Ryan. OK, that's the book, incidentally. Uh, My Brother, Jason, by Tracy Corbett Lynch and Ralph Regal. That is obviously available in bookshops now. I saw it in my own local bookshop the other day, so do try and pick it up if you can.